Okay, so it's summertime now. Time to head to the beach or the pool and lather on that sunscreen to stay healthy and prevent cancer. Right? Mm, not so much. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Britt Brings It Home. I'm Brittany, but you can call me Britt. I'm a homeschool mom to my two sweet boys, and I'm passionate about creating a healthy and organized home and life for my family, and helping other moms do the same. And some exciting news, I just started studying to become a certified holistic health coach. I'm learning tons, and I'm so excited to bring some more knowledge in the health and wellness world to my YouTube channel and to my blog, Brooke Brings It Home, and eventually work with clients. So just a disclaimer in today's video, I am not a doctor, and more importantly, I am not your doctor or other healthcare provider. Today I'm discussing a health and wellness topic that is definitely controversial. So take this how you will, but don't take it as medical advice. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff sun care. So we've heard for years now how important it is to lather on sunscreen before you go outside. You don't want to get cancer. We've been warned about the dangers of the sun and about getting cancer from too much sun exposure. Nowadays we probably all know someone that either currently has cancer or who had cancer. And one of the most common types of cancer is melanoma, which is a skin cancer. And we've heard that it comes from too much sun exposure. And besides the risk of getting cancer, we know that too much sun exposure can lead to sunburn, dehydration, and aging of the skin, those dreaded wrinkles that we don't want to get. So yes, protecting your skin from the sun is important. However, it's also important to be smart about it and not go way over to the other side to where we're putting ourselves in a bubble and not letting our skin touch the outside world in fear of getting a sun ray on it. And it's important to make sure that we're not using sunscreens that can actually cause more harm than good. So we will get to some safer sunscreens in a little bit, but first let's talk about the benefits of the sun. Okay, so question. Do we need to wear sunscreen every time we go outside? My answer to that is no. No, we do not, and no, you should not. The sun is not the devil we make it out to be. For too long now, people have been promoting and promoting and promoting sunscreen and staying inside, not getting too much sun exposure, that we are fearing the sun. And yes, we should have a little bit of fear for it and be careful when we're out in the sun, but it's not something that we need to stay away from completely. Sunshine has tons of great benefits. Probably the most commonly known benefit that we all know is that the sun provides us with vitamin D. Vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin, but it's actually not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone that our body makes when the sunshine hits our skin. And it's the UVB rays in the sun that help our body to be able to make vitamin D. And vitamin D is important for so many things. It's important for healthy bone formation and dental health, heart health, immune health, and so many metabolic processes in the body. Vitamin D deficiency is very common. About 42% of American adults suffer with vitamin D deficiency. And when we're low in vitamin D, it can cause symptoms like depression, body aches, muscle weakness, fatigue, hair and nail breakage, frequent infections, and it can lead to more serious health problems like rickets, multiple sclerosis, cardiovascular disease, asthma, and cancer. Yes, cancer. There are studies that link higher amounts of vitamin D in the blood to lower risk of developing cancer. So we've heard over and over that too much sun exposure can lead to cancer, but also too little sun exposure and a deficiency in vitamin D can lead to cancer. Rates for new cases of melanoma, that's skin cancer, have been rising each year. They've been rising an average of 1.4% every year from 2009 to 2018. 
which is crazy because more and more people are spending more time indoors watching TV, playing video games, and less and less time outside. And when they are going outside, they're putting sunscreen on. So if that's the case, we're doing those things more than ever before. Why are rates of cancer going up? A book I read a few years ago and come back to frequently is Eat the Yolks by Liz Wolf, who is a nutritional therapy practitioner. And she writes on page 212, oddly enough, working indoors has actually been shown to accompany an increased risk of melanoma in several studies. One study of indoor workers observed a steadily increasing rate of malignant melanoma, even though the workers were exposed to as much as nine times less sunlight than outdoor workers whose rates of malignant melanoma have not increased. These studies concluded that sun exposure actually helps protect against skin cancer thanks to the vitamin D generated in the body as a result of sun exposure. So the vitamin D that we get from the sun actually helps protect our skin from the sun and protect us against getting cancer. When I first found out about that a few years ago, like that was mind-blowing to me like that's not what we have been taught and that's the thing I love about this book is that Liz Wolf like busts a lot of myths a lot of health and wellness myths that we have been told for so long that are actually not accurate okay so we know that vitamin D is very important but can't we get it from other ways besides just the Sun yes we can get it from other ways we can get it from food and supplements. So we can get it from foods like egg yolks, fish like salmon, sardines, mackerel, mushrooms, and beef liver, which not a lot of people eat nowadays. And then we can also get it from supplementation. And if you do take vitamin D supplements, make sure you get it in the vitamin D3 form. However, even though we can get vitamin D from food and supplements, it doesn't work as well in our body as vitamin D from the sun. According to studies, vitamin D produced in the skin from sunlight may last at least twice as long as vitamin D that is ingested. So the best way to get vitamin D is from the sun. Okay, so we know that the sun is important because it gives us vitamin D, but does sunlight actually have any other benefits? Yes, it does. It also provides us with sulfate. So just like with vitamin D, sulfate is a mineral that is produced when sunshine reacts with our skin. And sulfate is important because it helps to keep our blood fluid moving. It helps with detoxification and with neurological or brain health. Not only that, but sunshine also helps with our circadian rhythm, which is our body's natural sleep and wake cycle. When we go outside into the morning sunlight, it helps stimulate our body to wake up. The sunlight is our body's like alarm clock to wake up and it provides us with energy for our day. And sunshine also increases our hormone serotonin, which is our happy hormone. It helps boost our mood and keeps us from getting depression. And then sunshine also helps to balance our other hormones as well. Okay, so sunshine is important. But when I say sunshine, that's a few different things. I mean, there's our different rays in sunshine. So let's talk about the different sun rays. There are three types of sun rays that come from the sun, but only two that actually reach the Earth's surface. And those are UVA and UVB rays. UVC rays do not enter the Earth's atmosphere. UVB rays are the ones that most sunscreen protects from. That's the only one that most sunscreens protect us from. And they are the ones that help us to be able to make vitamin D when it hits our skin. They are also the ones that cause the surface of our skin to change color. So UVB rays are the ones that make our skin tan or burn. And we may be thinking like, oh no, I don't want my skin to burn. I better protect those UVB rays. But no, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, UVA rays are the ones that go deeper and they are more harmful. Most sunscreens do not protect against UVA rays. And they're the ones that go deeper into our skin and can cause cancer and wrinkling. 
when we get a tan or a burn, I like to think of that being our body's warning signal to us that we have had enough sun exposure, time to go inside, or time to cover up. But when we slather on sunscreen on our body, we're protecting against that UVB rays so we don't get that warning signal from our skin changing color, which a warning signal is a good thing. <laughs> It warns you of something dangerous. It warns you like, hey, you've had enough. That's enough sun for today. Think of a smoke detector. When a smoke detector goes off, we don't just like ignore it. We don't just take the batteries out and say, oh, I don't wanna hear that. It's warning you for a reason. Like there's a fire, there's smoke. You know, do something about it. Call 911, get out of the house. You don't just ignore that signal. Just like you don't, you know, cover up and ignore that warning signal from your skin. So when we put sunscreen on, we're not getting that warning signal from our skin, but UVA rays are still able to penetrate our skin. We're not able to get nearly as much vitamin D from the sun when we cover up with sunscreen. Wearing sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher reduces our body's ability to convert the sunlight to vitamin D by more than 95%. So we put on sunscreen, we're not getting the warning signal with the tan or with the sunburn, we're not getting vitamin D, but we are getting UVA. So those UVA rays are going deep into our skin and can cause damage. They can cause cancer. And when we go inside and we sit by a window, or if we're in our car under a window where the sunshine is still shining through, windows do not block UVA rays. They do block UVB, but not UVA. So we might go inside and think, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go inside and get away from the sun, and we sit by the window. Well, we're being protected from UVB, so we're not gonna get a tan or a burn, but we're still getting the UVA rays. So we do need sunshine, but when we get the sunshine, we need both rays coming at the same time. We need UVA and UVB to work together. We need a balance of those rays. When we're getting only UVA and no UVB, that's when the damage happens. Okay, so it's important to get sunshine, but it's important to be responsible and practice responsible sun care. So what is responsible sun care? What does that even mean? Okay, so here are some tips for you to practice good, safe, sun care this summer. Okay, number one is to get some sunshine. Get at least 15 minutes of sunshine every day, every day as you're able to. And that is without sunscreen, without any kind of sunscreen on. And everyone's needs for sun exposure are a little different. It depends on the color of your skin, where you live in relation to the equator. Do you live far away from the equator or close to the equator? Your age, your body composition, the time of year that it is, all those things play into it. So if you have lighter skin, like I do, you require less sunshine because it takes less time for your body to be able to get the right amount of vitamin D from the sun as people with darker skin. They require more sunshine to get the same amount of vitamin D. But start with 15 minutes and then go up from there. Go outside for 15 minutes. If your skin is starting to turn pink, go inside. If it's not, then stay out for a few extra minutes and try to add on a little bit of time every week until you're getting like an hour of sunshine. Try to get an hour of sunshine a day to make sure you are getting all that good vitamin D that your body needs. Now, during the winter, you're not gonna be able to get as much vitamin D, so you wanna make sure that you're getting it while you can during the spring and summer and fall, and then during the winter, supplementing or making sure you're eating foods that have a good amount of vitamin D. Okay, tip number two is to cover up. So once you've got that good 15 minutes at least of sunshine, you see that your skin is starting to get a little pink, it's time to cover up. So put an actual physical barrier between your skin in the sunshine. Wrap up with a kimono, a blanket, put a long sleeve shirt and some pants on or a dress, put some sunglasses on and a hat, whatever you need to do to cover your skin up. Number three is to go inside. If you spent your 
limit outside and your skin is starting to show it starting to get pink and maybe you don't want to cover up then it's time to go inside but remember stay away from the windows to avoid more uva rays and number four is to wear sunscreen but make sure you are wearing appropriate sunscreen that is non-toxic and that actually works i and my family do not wear sunscreen a whole whole lot when my boys go outside and play or when i go outside and run or go on a walk or whatever i don't put sunscreen on when we go to the beach and we're outside for a long amount of time and we're under you know that beating sun we don't have like shade trees around then i put sunscreen on but after a while my kids go play in the water for a little bit first i go play in the water for a little bit or sit and watch them we don't put sunscreen on right away we get a good amount of time without sunscreen and then we put sunscreen on them but i make sure it is an appropriate sunscreen so is any sunscreen okay to wear no no it is not Getting zero sun can be very damaging to your health. Getting way too much sun can damage your health and cause cancer. And putting sunscreen on that is filled with chemicals or that only blocks UVB rays can also be damaging. Like I said earlier, a lot of sunscreens that people use these days are filled with toxic chemicals and they actually end up doing more harm than good. Okay, so when you are sunscreen shopping, it's important to look out for a few things. First of all, is SPF the most important thing? No, it is not. The SPF number or sun protection factor tells how much more it would prevent UVB rays from entering your skin than when you don't wear sunscreen. So if the SPF is 30, SPF 30, that means that 30% less sun rays will enter your skin than if you don't wear sunscreen. Sun rays still will be entering your skin no matter what. No matter what sunscreen you wear, none protects your skin 100% from sun rays. But the higher the SPF, supposedly, the more sun rays it will block from entering your skin. However, there have been studies done, tests done on different sunscreens, and a lot of them make claims that they don't actually hold up to. And the SPF number only goes for the UVB rays. So it tells how much it protects against UVB rays, not UVA rays. And a lot of sunscreens don't protect against UVA rays. So the higher the SPF number it is, not necessarily the better. There's also been studies done that show that there's not that much of a difference between like an SPF 30 and an SPF 100. They're not that much different, not much more protection, and for sure not any more protection from UVA rays unless it is a broad spectrum sunscreen. So more importantly than looking at the SPF when you're picking out a sunscreen, look at the ingredients on the label because what we put onto our skin can be absorbed into our body, into our bloodstream. So it's important to make sure that you're not putting tons of harmful chemicals on your skin. Anything that you don't want in your blood or don't want in your breast milk, if you are a nursing mom, don't put on your skin. These are some common ingredients in sunscreens that you will want to look out for. Avoid them if they have oxybenzone, avobenzone, octisolate, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, octocrylene, homosalate, octinose, retinol palmate, or synthetic vitamin A, parabens, phthalates, or fragrance. These are ingredients that can enter your skin and can cause damage. They can cause skin irritation, allergies, cancer, and endocrine disruption, meaning they can cause imbalance in your hormones. Some of these chemicals act like the hormone estrogen in your body, so it gives you what's called estrogen dominance. Your body takes that and thinks it's estrogen, and so you have too much estrogen in relation to like your progesterone and your testosterone, and that can cause problems. In males, it can decrease sperm count. It can cause thyroid problems. It can cause fetal development problems for mamas that are pregnant. It can delay puberty for children that use these chemicals. So I said retinol palmate, which that is a chemical form of vitamin A, so it's synthetic, it's not natural. And when you apply it to your skin and then you go out in the sunshine and your skin is exposed to the sun, it reacts with that retinol palmate and it can cause problems including cancer and a lot of these chemicals are not only harmful to us humans 
but they're also harmful to the animals in the ocean and the coral reefs. Okay, so we know we should look out for those things, which I have a blog post all about this, and I will link it down below so that you can go back and look at it and look at what chemicals to avoid whenever you are picking out your sunscreen. So what to look for? When you are looking for a sunscreen, you wanna look for one that has non-nano zinc oxide. That is the white stuff that baby diaper rash cream is made of. And it's white, it goes on white on your skin. That is a physical barrier between the sun and your body. The sun actually hits it and bounces off. So it does not penetrate your skin. Other sunscreens actually absorb and shatter the sun's rays, but zinc actually reflects it. And the great thing about zinc is that it protects against both. It protects against UVA and UVB rays, and that is what we want to help maintain that balance. Okay, so I have searched and searched for sunscreens to try to find the best ones don't have toxic chemicals that have good clean ingredients that have zinc oxide to actually protect your skin from both of the sun's rays some of these i have used and do use and some i haven't used yet but i've looked at the ingredients researched look at the reviews and they look like great ones so these clean non-toxic sunscreens are beauty counter badger all good beauty by earth babo botanicals goddess garden raw elements kiss my face bear republic and aaron's faces and i have the links to all of these sunscreens in the blog post that i'm linking below so if you want to go check them out for yourself definitely do that the one that i'm currently using is badger this is the unscented broad spectrum spf 30 natural mineral sunscreen lotion and the main ingredient is zinc zinc oxide it works really well and doesn't have those harmful ingredients in it all right guys so that is it for this video i hope you got some good information out of this and if you have any questions definitely feel free to ask me down below if you have another safe non-toxic sunscreen that you use let me know in the comments and i will check that one out and add it to my list if it looks like a good one i encourage you also to go out and do your own research look at the ingredients of the products that you're looking at look at how long the ingredients list is and look on apps like the EWG app and the Think Dirty app and type in those products and see if they are clean or not. I share a lot more about clean beauty products and things to look out for in a video I did a while back called Why I Switched to Clean Beauty. So I will link that and you can check that video out also. All right guys, well thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have an awesome summer. Enjoy some time with your family in the sun. Don't be afraid of the sun, but do protect yourself with some good, safe products or go inside when you've had enough sun exposure. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video from my home to yours. See you next time.